Got it. Okay, it is live. Here we are. Yep. Here we are. Oops. Ah, oh, this thing, I think, always discord. All right, there we go. Hey, what's... Is that my? No, I think it's yours. You get your volume on. The yeah, Mrs. Iona get them on. Oh. Yeah. Yep, yeah, she get them on. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Charles? How you That's seeing, it. man? I, I I stay pretty good, pretty good, brother. Pretty good. How's the how's the working man? How's the working man, bro? I went to the airport today. I go spin past the airport, man. Holy yeah. cow. Holy cow. Well, yeah, I Holy tell you, it's cow. it is it is it's scary. It is um it is something to be careful of. And um you know, I just, well, put it this way. You just, you got to be careful whether it was here or not, right? The dreaded, the dreaded disease. You just got to be careful. But I can tell you one thing. Got a lot of people, a lot of people visiting. So. Yeah. And, and uh, we'll, we'll wait a little while. I know we, it's very early. It's, it's only quarter two, but uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. A uh, lot of stuff to talk about, but uh, mm -hmm. before we before we start, guys, share. You know, to stay safe, of course. Hashtag stay safe. Also, tomorrow we'll be announcing this uh, throughout the evening. But uh, tomorrow on Pop Up Makeke, five o'clock tomorrow, PM, Channel Five. Haumea mm -hmm. Hawaii, our awesome, lovely angel friend Kiala Wolf. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Her company, Haumea Hawaii, will be on Pop-Up Makeke tomorrow at 5 p.m. All kinds of good prices, guys. Please, please, please. And we'll, we'll repeat this later on, but please, please, please. 5 o'clock tomorrow, Channel 5, Pop-Up Makeke. I know you guys all know what that is. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Bye, bye, bye. Perfect time. Buy your gifts now for Christmas because it is July tomorrow, bro. July, yes. the second half of the year. What is going on? Well, it's one of those things. And to be honest with you, I'm sort of like in a stupor right now. You know, when you overwork. <laughs> oh, I see. I, I notice <laughs> a different background. Like you stay in a, you look, look like you stay in my uh, high school bathroom. With yes. The smoke alarm. Yes. Is that where you you call high school the bathroom? In the U building, yes. A boy's bathroom right now. Ah, okay. Just how like convenient though. How how convenient. Get the echoing sound in it. No, I'm not. I'm at the beautiful Sonesta in Kalapaki. So I want to thank the missus for getting uh you know, we did it as a safety precaution because the amount of hours that I'm putting into transitioning the new uh security at the Lihue Airport. So I just want to be close by and make sure everything goes A-OK. -okay. And so far, it's so good. I want to send a shout out to the uh, state employees as well as the employees. Uh, it's a newfound family that I made with the members of um, Allied Universal. I want to say thank you very much. And a good good bunch of people, you know, the, the, the people that stay and a good bunch of people. So I just want to say thank you. Yep. Well, for those of you that have no idea what the heck Uncle Charlie is talking about. <laughs> um, by the way, Bethany, I miss you, you too. Uh, I miss all of you guys. What's up, Pops? My dad is on. All right, all right. For those of you that don't know, um, the airport security contract uh, expired and changed over to a new company from Securitas, which all of us remember Securitas and uh, Allied uh, Industrial took over and they sought the expertise of our own 
Charlie Iona to take over at the helm. So Charlie, for the last few weeks, has been, he hides yeah. it well. He hides it well, but um, he has been, and I'm just going to say it, they have to train all, retrain all the employees. And they had a very, very, um, oh man, I just got a text. Oh. I just got yeah. a text. Uh, anyway, you know, and we'll get to this in a little bit. But anyway, Charlie uh, has been in charge of getting everybody retrained. Contract, the new company took over on the 29th, which was midnight. Yep. Um, yesterday, midnight, 12.01 a.m. So Charlie has been working 27 hours a day. He had to borrow. He, he had to borrow hours from the next day to make up just so he can get everybody trained. Good news. Everybody's trained. The transition occurred. Yes. And uh, Charlie, congratulations on your new Thank job. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody can handle that, Charlie, it is you, buddy. And I, and I well, see thank that you, sincerely, man. genuinely. I've known Charlie now for a very long, 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 long time. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that uh, you will do extremely well. And, well, I thank you very much, my brother. It's, uh, it's been an experience. So from June 4th all the way to now, we were tasked with training almost 1,100 men and women statewide. And it was... We had 27 days to do it, and they did it. So credit actually goes to the men and women who found the desire to to want to stay employed at the airport, and they didn't. Uh, you know, we were just a guiding force, but they they were the ones that put in the the hard uh, the the sweat equity into it. And I, I you know, I I become very fond of them. They, you know, it just shows their their resilience. And some of them were just get off of their duty with the other company. And then they went over and trained with us. And so they, they stayed up nearly 20 plus hours and they did it. And uh, it is, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's all I can say. So thank you to, to the men and women and to, uh, um, to the state of Hawaii for giving these people an opportunity. So it, it, it is, it is amazing for, for all spectrums. And uh, I think the, the people of Hawaii, especially on Kauai, can feel rest assured that your airports are safe, that um, there's many facets to now is because of the, the restrictions being lifted for inter-island. But just seeing all the, uh, the workers there from Roberts, because they, they do still the Trans-Pacific uh, pre-testing from Roberts, uh, the visitors bureau, the, the you know the, the information concierge individuals at the airport, they're they're doing their darndest, and even though some of us, uh, I, I I felt it sometimes that I think we're have too much uh, too much uh, traveling coming to the island, but you know what, everybody deserves a right to see what we find so special in Kauai. So I, the takeaway from that is you just try to be as pleasant as possible. And today I was practicing my aloha spirit. So when uh, people are walking uh, down the aisle that comes out of the uh, different foyers, I give a great big shout out, aloha and welcome to Kauai. And I was almost like a, a tour guide. I was telling them, you know, the, the thing I, I I was telling most of them is, um, I don't know where you're going to find a rental car. <laughs> it's, I, I it's, all, it's all swallowed we, up. <laughs> we, today, me and my partner was driving on the highway. Uh, where were we now? And we saw, oh, down by, uh, down by the Willy Willy. Yeah. By, uh, right by Habba Mall. And we see these three obviously tourists with rented bicycles because they don't have cars and i've told my partner you know <laughs> those people have no clue because they were yeah. just starting on the flat until they got to go up the hill i said they do not have a clue that what they're facing they were not they were not young 
And uh, I know that at some point they're going to turn that bike around and ride right back down the hill. But yeah, it's, you know, Charlie, you bring up a good point. I don't, I don't blame the tourists for wanting to get out of where they're at. You know, everybody's disgusted with COVID. They've been, they've been locked down or, I question why people want to travel right now um, mm -hmm. with the variant rapidly spreading. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but right. why would anybody want to travel? Uh, but you're right. I, how do you fault them for being, being in prison for a year and a half? And, and now, mm -hmm. you know, what is funny, we've been saying this for a long time, Charlie. I know you know that I have been an advocate for reducing the number of visitors coming. I, you know, I, and for years, we've testified to the state saying, hey, give the counties an opportunity to chime in when uh, airlines want to increase routes to their island. There is absolutely no input from the residents, the, the communities, the citizens of the counties. Mm -hmm. These airlines with the state, because of the, the greed, um, they just pump them out. Hey, when they see the demand coming up, they just pump up the routes. They add more routes. And and it pisses me off. So what is so funny to me is months ago when Mayor Victorino was asked about, are they ready? Yeah, we're ready. We support the governor's opening up. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. And today he's begging the airlines to please don't bring so many tourists. What did they think was going to happen once they opened it up? What? What? Honestly, Charlie. Yes. I, I'm not an economist. I'm not one. I'm a, my degree is in criminal justice. I have nothing. I have no shit knowledge about economics, any of that stuff. But I know this: when you cage up an animal for a year and a half, and you open that door, they are going to run nuts. And that's we knew this would happen. They knew this would happen, and now they shot. We didn't realize it was going to grow so fast. Then you guys are you guys are knuckleheads. Anyone that didn't mm -hmm. see this coming, mm -hmm. they're they're naive. They're, you know, they were they were the, the the carrot that was being dangled by the industry, and the pressure from the industry was, they they, they all thought it was going to happen so gradually. It was going to take us two years. No way! Come on, people. HTA, HLTA, all of you guys that work in this industry twenty four seven should have seen this coming. You guys should have advised the governor and said, hey, when, when you open up the doors, guys, we're going to, we're going to, the, the eruption going to happen. But no, no, it's going to take us two years. We may never recover. It may take five years. Come on, man. Come on. But anyway. Well, we're gonna, I can see tonight, tonight going to be a fun night. I can see it's going to be a oh, an yes. explosive night. Um, again, guys, stay safe. Hashtag share this thing right now. Hit the share button. I think what Charlie and I have to say tonight needs to be heard. Uh, and, and again, pop up Makeke tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Channel 5. Haumea Hawaii. Keala Wolf. Her company will be on. Please, please, please check it out tomorrow. Uh, check it out. But hit the share button. And listen, guys, for those of you that got to travel because of personal emergencies, family, illness, medical visits, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about casual leisure travel right now. Um, and we, we saw the numbers today on Kauai. What did, need I say more? Need I say more? Well, you know, it, 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 it all I can say is this, you know, sometimes you want something so bad and you're hoping you have this premeditation that you're hoping that people will act accordingly. But if you really don't have an enforcement mechanism, what you're doing is, it's like if you, if you don't have any well individuals who are, are, are experts in training, say, um, dogs, and you have a bunch of wild dogs coming out of the cage, like you said, if you're not skilled in training them, all you will get is a bunch of wild dogs <laughs> and that's yeah. and that's uh, and i'm not saying that facetiously or trying to label the, the visitors that all i'm saying is you have a lot of visitors there should have been a matrix in place to say hey when you reach this amount because 
Everything has a capacity. I don't think the state in their wildest dreams ever thought that we would reach capacity so soon. So like anything you have, like a flood, right? You have to channel that flood waters to drain out a certain way so you don't hurt anything downstream from it, right? You don't hurt neighborhoods, you don't hurt homes, you don't hurt pasture land, all of that. But what happened is the floodwaters was just open and yet a state saw, oh, look at it, it's, you know, it's receding rather quickly. But nobody ever bothered to find out how is it affecting the communities? How is it affecting the communities? And that's what's been happening. So I wanna say, and like you, you had your degree in criminal justice, I had my degree in underarm deodorant degree. That's what I use. So anyway, <laughs> and yeah. now I want to I want to give a shout out. Somebody asked me, Uncle Charlie, what's your aloha shout out? And it, it, it's real simple. I said, Aloha. I know I sound like Uncle Danny Kalekini, but no, this is Uncle Charlie Iona. So I just want to say aloha to you all. Well, you know, we've had uh, our last few shows pretty impacting. We had Governor uh, Caetano, uh, very amazing, amazing man. And then we had uh, Dr. Miskovich, uh, you know, and there is absolutely no reason to think that Hawaii is going to escape an outbreak from this variant. It's here. We know it's here. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you read my mind. See my wife, I was like, I was gonna have to mute my mic and go yell out the door, but she read my mind. Oh man. Anyway, there is no reason whatsoever to believe that we're gonna escape this, the wrath of this variant. I know people are gonna say, well, you know, look at the hospitalizations, look at the deaths. Well, look at the deaths. We had one more today in, in the state or in Honolulu. Now, People who say it's only one, only one. We just, we had two, we had three, we had one, we had two. These things are adding up. Add them all up and then, and then tell me that, oh, it's only one. And then go tell that to the families of those that lost loved ones. You know, Charlie, I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, right before the show, right before the show, I got a call, my nephew, I'm not gonna mention names. Uh, he and the wife tested positive today. He has no idea where he he got it from. No idea. Um, I'm on the phone with him and he's coughing and he says, no, he thinks that's his asthma, but I'm concerned. His wife is pregnant, ready to give birth any moment now. I'm concerned. You know, this has been personal for me for a long time. Charlie went with your brother and then my, my first cousin. And I mean, my first cousin passed away. And, I, you know, I don't mention that much. I, I don't, my nephew and his wife, young. And then as you were talking, Charlie, I just said that uh, I had just gotten a text. That's another text from someone completely not related, but a very, 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 like a brother to me, his daughter-in-law just got test uh, just got the results today positive mm. just what 15 minutes ago 10 minutes ago so now his son is waiting for their results and his family this variant is freaking highly transmissible transmissible i don't care what josh green tells you see i will get mad tonight because i watched the governor uh, on his interview yesterday, and he was asked point blank, point blank, are you concerned about the variant? And, and he said, I'm very concerned because it's much more transmissible and it causes more severe illness. Okay, so he, this is what pisses me off, family. Because he knows that, he recognizes that, and he states it. And then the next question is, is that going to affect your decision to open up the state? And he said, no. You see, I can see if you're a dumbass, ignorant jackass, 
and you don't know that it's highly transmissible and you don't know that it's more deadly. And then you say, no, nah, I, I can, you know, we're gonna move forward because it's not more transmissible or it's not more deadly. But he acknowledged that, he acknowledged that and then says, no, nah, it's not gonna affect our opening. That pisses me off. And you know, Charlie, we have been supportive of, you know, we, we, yeah, Josh Green says it's a little more trans transmissible. You know, Josh Green should be, uh, he should be, on, whatever, I'm not even gonna go there. I sick and tired of that guy coming out and telling everybody how mild this is. I'm pissed that he comes out and says, this is, don't worry, I'm not concerned about the variant when everybody else in the world is deathly concerned. But the governor knows, he knows, the Department of Health knows. And yet he's still going to maintain the opening. Now, I, I don't, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, the, the, nobody dying, nobody this, nobody that, you know, we know for a fact that that vaccinate, fully vaccinated people are in the hospital. We know that. Even Josh Green said no, but he, he lied because the health director said, yeah, the, the state health director or the epidemiologist said there was. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see what's going to happen. 11 cases today, people on Kauai. Majority of them community spread, still with the clusters that the Kauai refuses to disclose, which is really upsetting me. And, and that's a whole nother discussion. I mean, you know, they didn't hesitate to release Rob's, Troy's, the, the Sheraton or whatever it's called. And then the church, oh, we cannot release churches because they, they get a good handle of their membership, but restaurants or bars now yeah, we got to release and, and they haven't. Now you get my nephew, my, his wife or his fiance, their unborn child, their, reg, their child who's little, they don't know where these clusters are. How can they even know if in fact they went and got it from a cluster spot if the county isn't telling us where the cluster is? So now when the Department of Health talks to them, how did it, do, you, you see what I'm saying? It's pathetic, it's pathetic. It's not about ratting anybody out, it's about saving lives. So I'm pissed as you can tell I'm pissed because this stuff is getting worse and, and, and the state has absolutely no plan, no plan to adjust. You know, you go box or you play football or whatever, when your opponent switches up on you, you gotta adjust, not us. We're moving forward and we're gonna wait until people get sick and die before we make the adjustment. And I, th that to me is the horrible, horrible, horrible game plan. Sorry, Charlie, I thank you for letting me rant. I'm pissed off. Well, sometimes, you know, to each his own, you, you gotta say what you, you feel. I, on the other hand, I just look at it from the, the standpoint that the only solution I see to this whole, this whole mess is the ability to take care of oneself, not put it in the hands of anybody else. Uh, just like with your doctors, you can heed their advice and maybe proceed with caution from there, right? Mm -hmm. But if it seems like they're leading you down a rabbit hole that might have dismal, dismal consequences, then your gut feeling says, no, I'm not gonna follow that. Then you don't, right? Mm -hmm. So when, we, when we're looking at this, um, the Lieutenant Governor, again, like I've said before, he has a right to say whatever he wants to say, but it gets, it gets annoying and I know it gets annoying to you because it's just like a bunch of garbage that's coming out from his mouth. That, that he, and, and you know, there's really no way of refuting or rebutting what, what he's saying. So people just have to remember now, he said this on this Indian state, or he said this on this Indian state and, and so many others were, were part of the guests on that series, right? You just gotta follow along where the thing goes. And I know a lot of times families uh, people nowadays, they have a lot of things to do, so they might not be following it. And all they might see is the after effects where they have, um, you know, 
like an outbreak in in their neck of the woods. And then and then you wonder, hey, let me ask you something. <laughs> Was there a warning put out, or did it just suddenly appear, right? And that's the unfairness. I mean, if you're gonna open a state and you're gonna allow this, you know, because it's it's proven, it's it's coming in by air. There's there's no doubt about it, right? If you're going to do that, I would think any responsible politician would start to arm their constituents, start to arm their communities, start to arm the people that live in that area to know exactly how bad this thing is and where it's going to go. And the risk is up to you, how you want to take it, right? But he doesn't even give us that fair shake. So if you didn't know any better, you get snowed right from the get-go. You get snowed right from the get-go. And then to realize after, should you get the variant? Should you be exposed to it? It's too late already. I always remember, you know, uh, some individuals, you know, they they say the, um, they survived COVID, but still you have that long haulers, right? All these different medical conditions that pop up. And then they show the, they always show the image, the x-ray image of a, what a good lung looks like and what a bad one looks like. And this COVID is beyond bad. It looks like shards of glass, gray and cloudy. I mean, who wants to go through a night of hacking all of that, right? I should tell no, I don't. So if, you know, for those of our viewers out there, if if there are words of wisdom that we can absorb, hey, send it, send it in your, send in your text. Let us know whether you can use it or not. Be, and the thing is, we just have to know in his, uh, really in each other's heart that we have good intentions. But sometimes people get slighted, right? And all we see is a negative come out from it. And all, and I'm gonna say this. I, I never thought I would ever say this in my entire life. But all I'm gonna say is, let's just pray for them because things are going to get a lot more difficult. Like I tell you guys, every I pray every night for these guys. I pray every night. Before I lay yep. my head down, I pray every, every night. Um, you know, and I, you know, they don't get it. They don't get it. I can tell you that uh, <clears throat> my nephew and my niece, because she's pregnant, uh, have been practicing safe uh, they've just been very safe. He was telling me, you know, uncle, I, we, we know, we don't go around people. We, you know, if we see people, we, know, we always mask up. And, uh, and he has, he, he, he don't even know where to start to think where he got it from or, or she got it from or whoever got it and pass it to the other, or did they get it together? Uh, they don't know. And, um, how do you contact trace that, you know? And so it's, it's, I guess in time, well, maybe we'll find out. We see more common denominators with cases, but I can see that tomorrow, just just right now, I know that today, today's numbers, my my uh, nephew and his fiance and my friend who just texted me 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, they weren't counted in today's numbers because they they found out after the, the report came out. So um, that's three already, and yet still waiting for tests on other family members. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have that kind of spread without before the variant. Yeah, you had little ones, but this one is spreading fast and it's spreading a lot. Look at the today, whatever. What what was the travel related? Was it two or four travel related today? I think it was four mm -hmm. and seven uh, community spread still coming from the original clusters, which they're not disclosing. This thing spreads like wildfire, and you would think that that would be a red flag for our decision makers, but it's not. And you can tell me that it's, the, you know, that it's not uh, travel related. Remember now, yeah, today's travel related were visitors, but we, the majority of our travel related cases are from people coming back from the mainland, bringing that stuff back, because it's all over. It's all over. So, you know, we, we can be as careful as we can and we gotta be careful, but this one, unlike the other variants and the, the original COVID is, is different. And, and it's going to continue to get more aggressive. So. 
Yeah. We'll just have to be careful. That's that's all. Now, let us move on to an area that you know we don't talk about too much, and that is the speed at which this this variant is traveling. We we never think about it. We just know, you know, we talk about it here. It, it, it seems like it was just around the corner. And next day, boom, the thing has gone to the opposite side of the island. I mean, it just moves so fast. And I think many of us need to understand that, that if the speeds is what's keeping us in awe of how this thing spread, just imagine if it starts to move towards you, would you have enough time to get out of its way? Now, like your nephew and wife said, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, we never know where we caught it, right? Because this thing is invisible, you have to assume it's, it's all around you, whether you want to accept it or not. And I think a lot of people think like, nah, it couldn't happen to me. Then it happens, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then once it happens to you, your mind is going to get very analytical and find out, okay, where, where could I have gotten, right? Who could I have come in contact with? You know, I've been down, I've been down this area before. I've never had anything. Why only now? Okay. And usually when you ask yourself those kind of questions, it's probably too late. It's 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 lashing itself onto you. So again, your I guess your nephew has to just be careful. Yeah, well, he's in a facility and then he's going to have to quarantine for whatever, 14 days, whatever. Mm -hmm. I just want to address Beth. Um, Beth says the good news is they really don't know yet if it's more deadly. Uh, they always fumble and mumble when they talk about that, partly using the fear of Delta to get vaccination uh, rates up. I'm not sure if you were on our show with Dr. Miskovich, Dr. Kim from the International Vaccine Institute. Uh, no, it is more deadly. It is much more aggressive. It is much. It creates much more severe illness. That That is not and unknown anymore. It was when the variant first came out, uh, but but now it's 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 known that in fact, I mean, look at Israel and those countries that these guys are getting vaccinated and and still dying because of the variants are, are just spreading. You know, you, that's just the that's just the formula, right? You get more cases, you'll get more illness, and you'll get more death. Yeah, a lot of people will 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 be able to fight it off because they're vaccinated or because they have immunity maybe they've that they had the virus prior but the fact remains that the more uh, virus that we allow in the more people are going to get sick we're going to get more cases and we're going to get more hospitalizations we're going to get more deaths that that's not that's just the science of this thing so uh you know while the governor and lieutenant governor can pretend that or or uh fantasize that we're going to be okay uh Unless there's something extremely different in the in the uh, the the way Hawaii is built, which <laughs> we ludicrous to think that um, they're 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 off track and and they are not listening or heeding the warnings. And I'm not talking about CDC. You 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 know you you can believe CDC or not. I'm not talking about CDC. Listen to the the, the leaders and the health professionals in those jurisdictions, in the states, in the countries that are suffering from this variant. That's who you listen to. Like Dr. Miskovich said, the book is, is, is written. The roadmaps are out there for us to follow. We just choose not to. And somebody, somebody's, you know, somebody's gonna be, uh, gonna, it's gonna be accountable to this. Yep. Accountable. Yep. And you know, this is the part, Charlie, and we talked about this a while back, is that, you know, we, we come from law enforcement. If you, you, you went to your uh, restaurant with your wife, your family, and you saw something going on that wasn't right, you would intervene. That's just how we're built, right? That's our DNA, you're gonna, you're gonna do something. Over here with COVID, we, we don't have, we, we can't, yeah, we can come on our show and we can preach and we can tell people what, uh, what, what, what they should be doing and what, but, but, Aside from that, there is absolutely nothing we can do but watch the numbers rise every day. And, and, and you know, I always found joy in, in telling people I told you so, you know, in other non-health related, non-illness related 
uh, issues. I love that when I'm right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, Charlie, I know we, we had this discussion offline. We don't want to be the ones who come out and say, we told you guys. But it wasn't just Charlie and Mel. Yeah, it was all the experts from around the world telling us to be careful. Don't rush. Yeah. They, 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 they have made up their mind. They made up their mind, Charlie, that they were going to open up by the 4th of July weekend. They wanted to open up and as close to the 4th of July weekend as possible. And they were successful. Well, they got you know, what they wanted. And now we, now we wait back and see. I will say, I will say this. The state will realize when there's so many travelers, right? And most of the real estate is taken up. So there's, those travelers are kind of like at a beck and call because they, you know, if, especially if they don't have wheels, they wait for someone to come pick them up. What we know, <laughs> what we know is that these travelers too, the state is trying to say, give them that experience. We don't even have to do anything and they're already talking negative, why? standing long hours in a line when they arrived, right? Going to some place that was kind of pristine, didn't have much people, the brochure showed, but when we showed up there, there was a ton load of people in that, in that natural spring or that natural pool where they're all swimming at, right? So I've heard them walk by and they said, man, you know, they, the, the expertives that they said weren't nice, but whose fault is it? Because those businesses that allow travel to go haphazardly, I'll tell you the reason why they don't care. They got their money, they got paid already. <laughs> Whatever happens to the travel, it travel it's on them. That's why a lot of these agencies, they, they don't care, especially when it's a prepaid, you know, tour or, or a private tour guide, you know, as a tour guide. Once they get their money in their pocket, it's like, Adios, amigos, you know, one of those things. So good or bad, I, I just don't want anybody getting hurt. And we can see, you know, even those, you see them walking on the side of the highway, like you see them walking from the hotel to KBR. Just imagine how dangerous it is, dangerous it is when we drive, let alone how dangerous it really is when you're walking, right? When you're walking on the side of the highway, especially that bridge that goes over Hanamalo below, right? Mm -hmm. Hanamalo below. Oh man, yeah, I haven't. I've yeah. seen them. Yeah, they're walking. They're walking on the thing. They, they're pulling their suitcase in tow, and, they, and they're making their way to KPR. But the thing is, wow. I, I've seen some pretty close nipping going on there, because you know it's just the person driving just misjudged. You know that the, it's just like coming over the Hanapepe Bridge. You know, get certain corners that juts out, right? Unless you drive the bridge all the time, you're gonna hit one of those corners. You're gonna hit it. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, hey, we like to say yeah. aloha to Gladys Paisa. I know I did see something a couple of weeks ago that she was laid up in the hospital. We wish her the best, and I hope everything turns out okay. So I just just prayers to you, speedy recovery. Former Maui Council Chair Gladys Baisa. Yes. I, I miss those days, Chair. I miss those days working together with you. And Maui is a special place. And I know you guys are going through some, some hassle. Same with us here on Kauai. I mean, it's, it's overcrowded. Um, and, uh, you know, I saw Gladys mention the, the rodeo. And, you know, <clears throat> people should, should be careful. Mm -hmm. But this is, again, Charlie, this is the problem I have with all of this, is that we know for a fact, there, again, is no dispute that herd immunity, to reach herd immunity with the variants, 80 to 90 percent, maybe even higher. Mm -hmm. There is no dispute that we will never reach herd immunity. And we heard this from the international director or the director general of the International Vaccine Institute, who has studied this from day one, who has been part of this from day one, very intelligent doctor. Yes. And so we know, we know, we or we should know 
that this number of 60% that the governor pulled out of his okole, and then the 70%, which was the original figure when we never had variants and we never had any type of mutations, the prediction back then was 70%. That was almost a year ago or half a year ago when everyone came out and said, we can vaccinate 70% of the people we should reach herd immunity. Well, that 70 went to 80 and then it went to 90. So we know this. Now you, you can believe whatever you want to, but the, the reality and the facts, again, that I rely on is the ones that actually know, like Dr. Kim. So we know that herd immunity, mathematically impossible because of people that just are too young to get the vaccine or whatever. So we know this, but you have a governor who's saying when we get to 60%, we're gonna lift the restrictions for Trans-Pacific. When we get to 70%, we're gonna lift all restrictions. Okay, so now to the lay person, to the lay person, mm -hmm. the, the, what, what, is the, what, what do you get out of the, those comments that, wow, we're, we're there. We're at 60% already, very close. 70% is right around the corner, which is not true because our vaccination number is not. We got to give away cash and prizes to, for people to get vaccinated. But when, when we talk about the comments about we got we to gotta be careful of events that we go to, well, if the messaging is that it's safe, if the messaging is geared toward lying to people and telling people that you know we are so close to being totally immune from this virus, well, we know that's not true. People are going to take those chances especially after being cooped up for a year and a half. You got an opportunity to go to a rodeo. You got an opportunity to go to a big event. You're going to go because the messaging that you're hearing every day from the governor and the lieutenant governor is that it's relatively safe to go. So that's who I blame. I don't blame the people for going to the rodeo. I don't blame the people because they're being the messages. See, not everybody watches Mel and Charlie every night. You know, they watch the morning news. When they get up, they make their coffee. And they watch the morning news and you hear Lieutenant Governor telling you how good we are doing and that we shouldn't be afraid of this virus, that we should, we should be working towards getting back to normal. So you listen to that, you go to work and that's it. Very, not everybody is reading and listening to what the experts are saying, paying attention. And I don't blame them, it's been a year and a half. And that's why we try to educate and inform everybody that listen, this is what's really happening out there. We, this is what's really happening. We, we're getting a hard time to hit 60% right now. We'll never get to 70. And even if we did, 70 isn't herd immunity. Why are they lying to us? I think, that's, I think, it's, I, I think it's negligent. I really do. I hey, think Mel, it's negligent. You've heard, of a, you've heard of a sputtering truck before, right? Those old trucks mm -hmm. that sputter. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much you try to clear out the the engine right you keep on stepping again and it just sputters and sputters and sputters right this, this state right now is sputtering because it does not know where it really wants to go you see because let's take for example they want to open up right we've always said doing it in a safe way Yet, now, those businesses who are hurting, like restaurants, right? Their back's against the wall, why? They've got all this business, but they just have to keep social distance. <laughs> so no matter what they do, they cannot, but you know, I'll tell you something. If I was them, I would really see what limiting the capacity would do. And, and why it's done that way and how you benefit from it. Because you may be one of those lucky restaurants that never has to be reported as having had COVID, never having to report to contact trace the people that entered there because someone had COVID, right? So I think some of these, these, these businesses should be sort of, I mean, thankful, I guess, that, you know, flooding our state to the capacity that becomes so unpleasant. Maybe she'd be thanking the state because nobody else is gonna to try to tame things down, right? So sometimes you just let, you gotta let the bad and good go at it and see what happens from there. It's unfortunate that you'll get loved ones caught in the middle, 
right? Yeah. You, you, yeah. You, that's that's the unfortunate part. Yeah. But how how many times have you and I been saying? How many times have we brought on the experts? How many times have the experts been saying we have to do everything open in a safe manner? Because you're still going to have to have the local population be able to move in a safe way. But if you're backing everybody's backs against the corner, can you move? It's like going into a, a, an elevator that's overcrowded. Can you really move around when you need, when the door's open and you need to get off on a certain floor? No, you got to ask for help. What is that help? Excuse me, may I get through? Excuse me, may I get through? The difference with this, this, this uh, virus and this variant, it doesn't hear, it doesn't see, it just reacts on its own and it will do whatever it wants to do. And there's not a damn thing you or I can do, except if we heed the warnings and stay far, far from it. Because coexisting on a thin plane, it doesn't yield good results. Either one's gonna flop into the other side or this is gonna flop onto your side. And then where are you at, right? That's the way I look at things. Especially when I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, we we were, I think, in general, we people were starting to to get used to going out. Um, you know, it had, those are restrictions in, in businesses, restaurants, and everybody was social distance and everything, and 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 so it was it was relatively safe. And and the, and the numbers no lie, the numbers no lie, right? The numbers were manageable. And exactly. then, and then when we opened up, and we allowed more uh, more people to to go to restaurants, and, and 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 then you got more people coming from outside that are bringing in this virus. Remember now, this virus is not being produced here in Hawaii; it's being brought in. Now our local residents are going to restaurants and and uh, or going to stores and Costco's and WalMarts, and you got people coughing and sneezing. And, and this virus is starting to spread and uh, it's becoming more dangerous for us as residents here. Uh, you know, that, that's the scary part. It's, I, we have not gone, I and mean, Patsy takes her mom on Saturday mornings, very early in the morning to do the shopping. I mean, I'm talking early, uh, they're in and out and that once a week. And, you know, it was nice as we were starting to look and, hey, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Pretty soon, we, you know, we will be back to normal. But when you allow more virus in, which is what was the concern of Dr. Kim as well as Dr. Miskovich, when we open up like this and after July 8th, a week away, a little more than a week away, eight days, when anyone can come in with a card from the, from the mainland, uh, we are going to see, and, and, and they know that, and they say, we'll be able to manage it. And Charlie, you and I both know this. Mm -hmm. We have friends that work in hospitals. Yes. We have friends, and I, I, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to identify our friends, but I will say this. The picture that is being painted mm -hmm. by all of these clowns making decisions that is telling you that there's only eight COVID patients, only, only 12 COVID people in the hospital. Mm -hmm. well, talk to the people working in the hospital. Talk to the people that are working in, on the front line, crying, crying because the bids are full and that people are being, their appointments are being put off because of COVID, because of COVID patients. People are foregoing their treatments because of COVID and are coming in because now they need to because it's has, has elevated to a level where they need the treatment. And now the damage to the lungs and so forth. And I'm talking mm -hmm. non-COVID patients. I'm just talking about the fact that the hospital beds are full. Doesn't mean that because only eight are COVID that we don't have an issue. The thing is, when you get COVID, if there's no bed for you, you are going to die. If we start getting COVID cases in the hospital and they start putting off treatments and surgeries for non-COVID people, people are going to die. 
And that is, Charlie, that is what I don't get. When, when the effort to try to convince people that we are nowhere near a crisis, that, that, that breaks my heart. It really does, because I know the truth. I, I know what's going on in the hospitals, and so do you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are getting a false uh, impression because of the information that's coming out of the state capitol. And scary, scary. Mm -hmm. So we just got to sit back, like you said, the unfortunate part is innocent people that we know and love. See there, Leah just said, our hospitals have no room. It, it, we know, we know this, but you'll never hear that on the news because they don't want people to get scared. They don't want people to freak out. They want people to go out and get sick. People, innocent people, many of which we know and love are going to get sick. Mm -hmm. There seems to be no one in, a, in the leadership roles up at the state that gives a shit. And, I'm, and, I, and I feel so angry about that. I'm so angry about that. Sorry for yep. the language. Yep, shame I on really you. Am. Shame on you. <laughs> well, my brother, let me say this. I think right now, you must feel the same way I feel. We get more positive than negatives. Because why? At least we know that the majority of our viewers, in fact, mo mostly all of our viewers, along with some of their guests, they have picked our show apart and they have followed what we said. And I, I can't be more happier than that. Right? Yeah. They did good. They did good. Yeah, I mean, and, and we have, you know, our viewers have, have been soldiers, you know, they have, and they've been, they've been our, our strongest soldiers who go out and spread the word. And I know a lot of them oftentimes get ridiculed, criticized, made fun at, and, and you know, I can, I can go sleep at night because I know that when, when I go, uh, why, what I don't get is why wasn't the hospitals expanded to get more bids? Well, that was actually, there were some expansions done, but again, the problem, I just address that real quick before I finish up what I was mm -hmm. gonna say. The problem right now, Joey, is that we don't have the staffing. We don't have the staffing, the specialized nursing people to man any bids. We, you know, it, er, early on, early on, I, I remember saying, you know, we could build mass units, we could build, you know, in the military, you build mass units, you build hospitals in tents. But in the mainland, I mean, in the military, when you have a crisis and you need that, you just bring in people from all over the world, all over the world, your, your, your troops. We don't have that luxury because all over the country is a shortage of doctors and nurses, specialty care nurses. So the bed is not the issue, it's the staffing. Mm -hmm. and, and that is why it's even more critical. Because if it was as simple as, Converting like this, you know, they bring the ship, right? The mercy ship. You, you bring them outside, outside of New York and, and wait it. But we don't have that here. We don't have, you could convert a hotel into hospital beds, but we don't have the people that can administer the care that COVID patients need. So I know it sounds a lot, sounds like an easy fix, but it's not because we just don't have the, the personnel uh, that, that can do that specialty care. And that's that's the frustration. So no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Sometimes you'll have a good ship, you have a good crew, you don't have a good captain to show the steersman where to go. You could wind up on the reefs. <laughs> yeah. You could, you could wind up on the reefs. Yeah. I forget what but, I was saying, but I think we were talking about our, our, our viewers being the soldiers going out and, and being ridiculed. But, you know, that's what I was saying. I, we, I can go sleep at night knowing that the information that we have put out there was fact-based, all fact-based. And, yeah, we get, we get questioned on the facts, whatever. But, uh, and, and I, I know when I lay down at night, I know that we did our best trying to get the word out that was important and that people can use, oh, as you always say, Charlie, use or not use, that's your choice, but we wanted to put out the information uh, for you all to at least, at least 
be able to make some informed decisions. That that's just that is our motive anyway, you know. Mm-hmm. Aside from a big paycheck that we get for doing the show. <laughs> you, got your, you got your check. I you know, Charlie, I still never get the check. I don't know. It's been 15 months. We're not gonna check yet. I'm not sure. Yeah, I got I got a check. <laughs> he did. Yeah. All, all 20 pennies, all 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, folks, um, hey, you know, some things that's been really bothering me, uh, especially on Oahu. And, you know, when certain times calls for dr- uh, drastic action, but when the coconut wireless is still and you don't hear too much chatter, that's when I get worried. Because I know that we, we still have uh, ongoing drug problems everywhere in the state, but Oahu is it's just really hot and heavy right now. And, you know, losing a friend because of drugs, it's, it's hard to take. It's even harder when another friend on this certain side of the, the camera is... You know, but anyway, I just wanted to say, I just hope and pray everybody just stays safe. That's that. That's the key, because I, you know, I wake up in the morning. I, I thank God so much for, you know, even though I work all those long hours, I still, you know, He is the one that gives me that energy to keep on going. Don't quit, right? You go until you can't go no more. And I'm not there yet. That's why I still keep on going, and I. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, uh, just to see the sunrise every day, especially over c- Central Kauai. <coughs> Excuse me, Central Kauai. <coughs> yeah, it, it definitely is a, it's a, not a bad place to be working, man, and to be, to be staying right now, Charlie. Um, yeah. You got some beautiful sunrises. Uh, it is really, a, it, it is a gorgeous side of the island. I mean, and you guys get the sunsets on the west side, but. Yeah, nothing like uh, like the Hui already. And you know, you know, and I saw this, uh, you know, that there's this, um, you know, like the hydrofoil boards, you know, guys are are riding those paddle boards that rise. I really would like to try that, but I can tell you right now, I've ridden one way, way long time ago, and I, I, I wrecked up the reefs because for some reason it just wouldn't rise, get me above the water. Was I doing something wrong? Or was I just too heavy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably a little bit of both. Probably a little bit of both. <laughs> probably a little bit of both. Yeah, I have absolutely no desire to try that. I mean, I, I need to be in a boat. I love boats. I love being on the water. Uh, when I was much younger, I, I had no problem diving. I don't know, man. I just feel I'm not comfortable on the water anymore. Um, and I don't really don't know why. But, uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time in the water. But, ah, uh, geez. Maybe you know, we I can know, both go. We can both go try one day. You know, I know for a fact that I can paddle, get on a wave. But it's getting up. You know, by the time I actually stand up to ride the wave, the thing power already. Because it took me maybe like 20 minutes just to put up one knee. And, you know, like when, you, when you're on one knee and you cannot stand up on your paddle board, and you try balance on one knee, like you're riding on skateboard, they're going out of control down one steep hill. What's the end result? Scrapes. Yeah. <laughs> Scragas. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with Kyolo Hills. Um, I lived yep. in Kyolo Hills for uh, right up on La- um, Lekeona Street, mm-hmm. which is up Kyolo Hills. Um, I forget what the main road going up was. Hele. I think it was Hele mm. or Mapuana. But anyway, before, never had all that houses on the mountains right now. Um, when I was living there back, I was in the seventh grade. And we had we would go to the top of, I think it was Haley. And, and I don't know if you ever did a catamaran with somebody on a skateboard where you sit on your board, he sits on his, you put your legs on his board, he puts his legs on your board, and then you hold arms. And then you go down like on catamaran. Now, when you're young, you're really stupid. And we started at the top. <laughs> And we went all the way down, full speed. Well, my skateboard, because I never had one really good one, had hit one rock. So my board had stuck. He went 
I went in the air, Straga's knees, elbows. I think I had a concussion. Um, he was able to ride his board down. And, and the, the problem with that was when he got to the bottom of Kyolo Hill, guess what's right there? The highway, mm. which yeah. went right across into the shopping center parking lot. And that's what we would do, like stupids. Of course, you couldn't do that today because you would get wiped, you'd get run over. But yep. it's all the kind of silly, 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 silly things well, that you do when you're young and dumb. Stupid. I, my, my skateboard, you know, back in the day, you know, I'm, I'm in my 60s, but back in the day, my, my skateboard comprised of those metal wheels. You know, the metal skateboards? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only thing I remember is, I told myself, you know, there's got to be a rise in why it's metal. And I found out, one, it's to create a slide, right? You slide. You, it doesn't bite. Two, the sound it made on the metal wheels is so loud that it would mask. You know when you start to scream when you're out of control? The wheels wouldn't allow you to be heard by anyone. The only thing is when dead silence because you holy muck a flip and end it on the ground and you start crying. But, but it's those metal wheels. So that's why I can relate to the rail. It's the, it's the same metal <laughs> wheels. <laughs> they are using uh, the skateboard wheels on the track. That's why they said the wheels are too small. The wheels are... No. <laughs> You know, I know, Charlie, we, I think all of us have been in a situation yeah. where you, you want something so bad that when you find out that what you like is not possible, you still no give up. You still yeah. no give up. The, all the proponents of rail, right? All the proponents that come out and when they found out that we had yeah. made a mistake like that, like the wheels are too small for the tracks. The first thought I had was no problem, just buy the right size wheels. Oh, no, 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 we cannot because then, then it's over the weight limit for that tracks. Okay, well, we know some guys got fired. We know that, but when all is said and done, and I don't know if that rail will ever be built. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that rail. All I know is that the counties and the state have paid a lot of money and it's not, it's gonna, it's not gonna right stop. Brother, when that rail is done, you know the operators. This is how they greet you when you come. <clears throat> They're gonna greet you ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the rail. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna come on. First thing he says, young man, you want some cocoa? <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what gonna sound like. <laughs> I, I appreciate it so much, um, Governor Aitano coming on and saying that he was a very strong proponent, advocate for the rail until he went to a venue uh, in Washington State and found out that we, this is just not going to work in Hawaii. And he came back and, and stood his ground. Uh, obviously, he lost his election for mayor and the rail was, went forward. And now I tell you, um, we'll see how, it, how the thing Pans out. I think embarrassing, but, embarrassing, but, Charlie. It's one of the most embarrassing. I think it's the, the worst capital project in the country in history. But do you know how you know how painful it is? I think about not about the money spent, because that's a given. What, what the hell are you gonna do? It's, it's already done with, right? And still yet not completed. What I am bothered by is many of those families along the routes that saved a lifetime. Right, that had to be subjected to eminent domain just so they could put the pillars in place. Mm -hmm. Now that sucks, mm -hmm. right? And then so you know you figure, well, okay, you pay me market value. Well, the sad thing is, the persons that moving you out said the market value. They said, no, you may think it's worth one million. I think it's worth ten dollars, and I'm going to pay you dollars, and you still got to move. Mm -hmm. So you know sometimes people they don't forget, right? They get hostile, they get hostility built up. Yeah. And then when something goes terribly wrong, they say, oh, what happened to that guy, Charlie? Why, 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 you, didn't flip, why you didn't flip out for? Hey, if you see a neighbor being 
psychologically abused leading up to purchasing or uh, through eminent domain that that land because they want to put an eyesore right there right first of all what can anybody see is the beauty of the real you think about it if you're on the street level driving right that damn thing is above your head it's gonna make your neck stretch straight up then you wonder why you got a big lump on the side of your neck because you're looking up in the air that thing is over 100 feet in the air so what you going what you going to see or hear at least the ones in chicago right they get slats over there because at night time what do they show every tv series they show the the, the real cars coming out right and mm -hmm. what's on the sparks i'm gonna show sparks i was not gonna show sparks why <laughs> the thing not moving fast enough to show sparks in the first place <laughs> And the wheel's too small. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is truly the story of the tortoise and the hare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the only difference is that the tortoise had win. Yeah. This one, the tortoise going to lose. I mean, I mean, you, you know how embarrassing the it is? The tortoise going to die before the end of the race. That's the but difference. Brother, you know how embarrassing it is? Now tell me, how many times have you watched the news when they talk about the real? We all seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Here you get one worker walking the same speed that the rail is moving. <laughs> and the rail looking beat him. He's right on the side of the rail, like, hey bud, you're doing good. If you can walk that far, why need on rail? Walk the damn path. <laughs> that that might be the only alternative they have is to, you know grass that thing over, make them a nice little walking bicycle path. I don't know, but you know, I, I think they can just right now because get too many of the active politicians that are that are uh, involved that they're gonna just have to wait until they all leave office or they die or whatever. And then, you know, turn that eyesore into some kind of asset for bikes. I, I, I don't know, but they cannot continue you know, we, you know, we pay for that. We get half a percent of our GET that goes to that nonsense, guys. It's crazy. And brother, just to think, you drive to the station, right? The stop off station to go ride the rail. No more elevator. You got to walk like up 90 steps. <laughs> and you go right for the next five miles, huffing and puffing. <laughs> because, and just to think, you're going to tell yourself, shit, I'm going to go down. I ain't gonna walk back up. Screw that. I'm gonna take my car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you. That's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. <sighs> Guys, <sighs> tomorrow, five o'clock, channel five, pop up Makeke, Hamea Hawaii. Please support Kiala Wolf and her company, Pop uh, Hamea Hawaii. I know we. She was so generous to us early on in the in the pandemic, donating a lot of prizes for our giveaways. Now is our time to pay back. Price is gonna be really good, guys. Go check it out. Five o'clock tomorrow, channel five. Pop up, my KK. Yes. And mahalo for chewing the state legislators out in that meeting. Yeah, I got yeah. Thanks, Ka Ek. They was trying to tell me that. Uh, we all got to, you know, we all got to band together. Like, they, did, they pissed me off when they said, you know, when Kauai had the hurricane, we all had jumped in to help Kauai because it was a natural disaster. I said, a hurricane and a rail is two different things. A hurricane is a natural disaster. The rail is a man-made disaster. So you guys deal with your Opala and stop dragging the outer islands, India. And they wasn't too happy. They're still not happy, but whatever. It is what it is, but you're welcome. Yeah, I well, don't know what's gonna happen with that thing. But. Yeah. So well, Charlie, how, you, everything pretty much stable for you now? You guys, the transition is complete and you're gonna get, be able to get some rest or you're gonna be living at the West, at the Marriott or the Sonesta for the, for the next six months? If you are, I like come visit and go swim in a pool. Sure, sure. You know, I, I learned a, a costly lesson. 
there's a reason why they paint the numbers on the side of the pool. It's to prevent you from diving in when it says one feet. Mm -hmm. Because I used, I was six feet, almost six one. Now I'm like five eight. <laughs> Uh, no, this, this this place is beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. But, you know, you ask the question, you know, is it, is it stabilized? Like any transition, you face your ups and downs. You face your ups and downs because it's just through a natural progression. What makes good leaders, and I, I'm not, I, you know, I'm far from that, but I try my best, is to recognize the problems and try to minimize the impact um, and the, you try to minimize the blow to the employees because many of them, this is, this is their bread and butter. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of make it difficult. It, it's not meant to be difficult. And security stands for that, to make it a safe environment for the traveling public going to and coming from, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what everybody needs to understand. Because if we had no security, it'd be utter chaos, right? Tempers would be flaring, right? They got the stickers on the ground, social distancing. Nobody recognizes it. I love it because it reminds me of a little kid. You know, you jump from one, uh, one round ring to the next one. You keep on jumping, right? But they knew I was coming because everyone I was jumping at the airport. When you come up by the airlines, the first one, the next one is only maybe a feet away. But by the time you reach way where the National Guard was, the bugger is so far, you pull one muscle in your leg. You know, like when you play hopscotch, you go, hey, how come I'm limping now? It's because, Uncle Charlie, you're not one gymnast, okay? Your leg no can go around your neck. You're lucky you can even leg, raise your leg six inches off the ground. That's the reason why. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, you know, <clears throat> I'm so concerned about airports um, because of the lack of social distancing and, uh, and you, you just, you know, more enough security guys, you know, more enough personnel at the state to, to manage that because there's hundreds of them. And Kauai, you know, again, there's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Department of Transportation who allows the airlines to fly in three or four direct flights from the West Coast at the same time. Well, I mean, one fifth grader could figure that out. But it's again, it's all about the convenience to the airlines, right? They got to do it where the airlines want to fly. Well, that's where we're screwing up. We, we're letting the, the tail wag the dog over here. And, and our, again, our local residents, and then the, just the threat of this virus spreading in those in, that environment. So, well, well there, is, there is no one that really wants to take the bull by the horns. And that's why I look back and I, I thank Joe Guy and Chipper Whitman for the massive job, you know, the massive job they've done with limiting visitors and, and, and opening up more for our residents to enjoy places like K.A. Beach, you know? Because, you know, there are a lot of times I, I, I see locals driving all the way out there and says, you know, let's get away. Let's go, let's go to Luma High. Let's go swim, whatever, right? Only to find out that, hey, the visitor beat you to it. There's no more room to park on the side of the road, right? So there, there, there needs to be some kind of controls in place so everyone can enjoy it. We're not just saying that I'm, I'm not trying to promote or let locals go first. I'm just saying everyone can enjoy. We can learn to cohabitate, right? Doesn't have to be a one-way street. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. Yes. What do you think, Charlie? You think you and me should run? I I think so. Yes. I think let's do this the official kickoff for 2022. Governor, Lieutenant Governor. Mm -hmm. they, they, Change. Yep. The, the, only the only trouble I see. How are we going to agree upon who will be governor and who will be lieutenant? We'll let the people. We'll let the people decide. We'll figure it out. We'll run a poll. We'll. I, that's why I left them blank, Charlie, because I, I think we need you as the the, the analytical, level-headed guy, and then I just be the 
freaking nut, you know. I don't know, but <laughs> um, I, I just curious. I know right now there's a lot of people that have just defecated in their pants. A lot of the people, if not now, tomorrow when they watch the replay, I just curious. How many of you folks right now watching would would jump on that wagon on that rail? How many of you guys seriously? Look, we get, we we win, Charlie. We win. This this is what's going to make the difference for this state, guys. We better pay attention. And you remember what I when I asked Governor Cayetano? Um, yeah, the uncles. There we go. The uncles for Governor Lieutenant Governor. That's how <laughs> we do it. But remember what the closing comment from Governor Cayetano? He says, when you guys go out to vote in the next election, you got to seriously consider the character of the candidate. You got to consider the character of the candidate. I'll leave it at that. You guys mm -hmm. can fill in the blanks or connect the dots, but that is what it's going to take to change this state. Now, this is not a political show, but I, you know, we, we all in this canoe together. So Yep. yep, there are no viable candidates. That is true. We'll see who pops up. We'll see if we'll have a pop up. I don't know. New t shirt. Yeah. The uncles for governor and LG. I like that. Kirk, if you're watching, go make a shirt, bro. <laughs> anyway, it's eight o'clock. Charles, what's your closing thoughts, buddy? Love you all. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on the Mel and Charlie Show. It's been an experience. It's been an experience. Thank you for allowing me to come on and share with you, Brother Mel. As tight as it may, it may seem, I, I still have that sense of responsibility to come before our friends, our family, and just speak our minds and let everyone know that sometimes many will not agree with our point of view. But that's, that's the beauty of it all, that we can be allowed to express our opinions. And we have to be humble about it because sometimes with the exception we had that one person right that one person that came on and i i was doing fine until um some of my gaskets got got rattled there a little but a hey, i learned i learned a valuable lesson and that is not all people will be pleasant so we just gotta roll with the flow go with the flow so my word tonight is you all take care and i love you all and I hope you tune in once in a while just to compare what it was then to now. Mahalo. Roger that, Charlie. Uh, mahalo again for, uh, I know you're super tired and and uh, just wishing you guys the best over there at the airport. And you and Steph, thank get you. some rest, some nice rest at the hotel. Guys, as far as all of you, thanks for joining us tonight. We will be uh, back on Friday night um with who knows what we haven't figured it out yet but uh, i know a lot of you guys i just wanted to end with this i know a lot of you guys think this is a joke it's not all right guys we guys see <laughs> charlie it'll be the covid we're gonna announce formally at the covid concert charlie's covid concert we're gonna announce uh but i know i know a lot of people right now are gonna 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 crap anyway you guys all take care. God bless. We love you guys more than you know. You guys stay safe. God bless. We will see you guys on Friday night. Aloha. Aloha.